Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, security. Security not in terms of home security, it's more related to IT security. My name is Jan Vandenburg, I'm from CertGate. CertGate is a um, security specialist based in Germany. We are delivering um, client security technology to um, companies in uh, international and they, <clears throat> so I'm very glad having the opportunity to uh, t talk a little bit about that topic. So when Nuran called me and, they, uh, to, and invited me to this uh, great conference here in Indianapolis, and I, so I tried to, to um, prepare myself a little bit uh, for this uh, specific and very important uh, thing. And um, let's take a look to my uh, desk. Yeah, so my, that's, that was my desk almost when, when sorting out the things, yeah, when looking what, what is important, what might be important, what, is, what, be, what might be interesting, what might be entertaining. So, and hopefully I have a, a few things um, for you brought um, in uh, the area, why do we need more client security? So first thing is, I'm inviting you to thinking a little bit about how do you and your clients are storing data, valuable data, and you typically you cannot differ in an iPhone or in, or in a tablet or on a laptop. Is this important or not? This is, and because you have a bunch of thousands of mails, thousands of data sets, and some are important, some are valuable, some are confidential, and so on. So how do you store these typically in several apps cross over the chat, email, somewhere. This confidential data is always at risk. Yes, sir. And remember, just this Uber data breach, we had a, with a, uh, 57 million data sets at the risk. We had a data breach at Yahoo. We had a data breach at um, several other, other companies. You can read it. And what I'm asking myself always is, the news are full of it but you do not hear that the C-level or a CEO gets in jail for it. No, it's, it's a Marisa Meyer who's getting a three or 10 million um, golden parachute yeah, for this um, three billion data set exposure. So this, I think it's a crazy world. So, and that's why we have to do some things yeah, to, uh, to prevent these things. And just remember, yeah, just because you, do, you haven't seen uh, the, uh, the danger, it is not going away. 94% yeah? of the companies are, uh, out there who have been hacked or something like this, yeah? getting this information about the hacking, yeah? not from insiders, not from their own IT, yeah? they are getting it from others, yeah? from police, other, uh, from investigators that are discovering that uh, this company had been um, hacked or something like that. And it typically it takes 400 days to discover that hack. So more than a year, yeah? It's, it's a go, then uh, the hacking had already taken place. So now you ask yourself, okay, uh, this Tim Cook is out there and saying, okay, I have a great iPhone here. This iPhone is completely safe, yeah? So, and, uh, and you may think, oh, you have a data center? It's also completely safe, so everything is happy. Everyone is in good shape. No, that's, uh, that's not true. Never forget the bad boys are really out there. They are 24 hours out there. They are not only here, maybe in, in Indianapolis, I don't hope so, yeah? But it's, uh, they are around there in the whole world, yeah? And they are targeting um, you, everyone, and this is not something, this is not a coke drinking nerd, yeah? At, uh, and, and hacking you at night. It's a billion dollar business out there. Yeah, so, and that's why I, I was searching around for some, some of these billion dollar business companies, yeah, trying to do hacking as a service. So, and, and I have found some, and it's a, it's a very interesting um, a company. It's a public listed company. Yeah, you can buy their stocks, yeah, so, and they're doing hacking as a service. Let's watch their ad, ad. Listen carefully. You are about to learn of a revolution in cellular interception.
Imagine this, sitting at your desk, you can intercept any call anywhere in the world with no need for proximity or line of sight or the provider's aid and on any device, technology or network. Isn't it the ultimate interception system? We developed it, Ulan. With Ulan, there's no need to be near the target. The operator can be anywhere in the world. The simple operation requires only one input, the number to intercept. It's not sensitive to the target's technology or the network's encryption. It uses no RF transmissions. And it can continuously monitor a moving target. Ulan displays the location of both sides of the call, even when dialing from a blocked number. Ulan intercepts dozens of calls simultaneously, and capacity can always be increased. The single operator means high level of security and confidentiality. And less personnel, vehicles, and training. All this superior capability arrives in an instant setup solution, accessed by any authorized device through the web. Just imagine the things you could do with Ulan. Ulan is a groundbreaking cellular interception solution, equipping you to battle the sophisticated lawless of our time. Ulan, we hear everything, everywhere. By ability, while others talk, we listen. So it's, that's quite unbelievable. But uh, trust me, this is no fake. This is a real company. They're doing real business and they are making real dollars, millions and millions of dollars for, the, for that service. So, and you can buy that. Um, and any other organization or any other country in the world can buy this service. So they can, they can intercept my telephone, they can intercept your telephone anywhere, everywhere. So this is something which is in the underlying technology of the, of the, of the telephone networks, but it's something you should know and everyone should know that these kinds of technologies are out there. So also, let's take a look to some market studies. So 25% of all Windows devices are running an outdated browser. So gladly, FileWave is uh, doing some... Uh, serious stuff on that, helping uh, that these browsers are not outdated anymore and getting much more safer. Yeah? And the same applies also to, uh, to plugins like Flash, Flash and Java. Yeah? They are vulnerable, if not uh, um, and, uh, updated. So <clears throat> now it is uh, also very important to look to the compliance aspect. GDPR. GDPR is a, is a regulation uh, like the Privacy Act in the uh, US, and it applies to any co co company which is doing business with any European company. So it's, uh, the, the reach go, goes far beyond Europe itself. Yes. And 84% uh, 84, 84 of the security-related people in the companies yeah, <coughs> Um, <clears throat> saying very clearly that it is a real problem accessing personal data from mobile from devices from outside. At the same time, more than a half of the employees saying that they are doing it. Yes, sir. And last but not least, 30% yeah, yeah, of uh, the uh, VP level yeah, saying, okay, they had already problems with uh, the telephones being compromised, hacked, or had to change their phones. Yes, sir. This, in, uh, as a combination, yeah, is uh, painting a very, very serious um, uh, <clears throat> situation. Let's take also a view to what are the costs of some, some stolen things and not what is related to that. 50% yeah? of all mobile devices users keep passwords, personal info, and credit cards details on their device. Yeah? And just ask yourself at this moment, do you store something like that on your phone? I do. Yes, sir. And I, I'm pretty sure that the majority of, 
of here of the audience is also doing it. Yes, so this is very important. Yes, so yeah, a laptop is stolen in the U.S. every minute. The same is a, if you look to a, a stolen smartphone. Yeah, what is on these smartphones? Yeah, it is a, the contact list. Sixty percent. That's that's great. That's uh, self-speaking. Yeah, but it's much more important from the from the organizational point of view is security codes and settings. Yeah, so more than a third yeah, have a security codes, settings, v, uh, access codes, and all these stuff on their, on their mobile devices. Yeah. So mobile payments also, this is sad for the owner, but maybe not so relevant for the organization itself. Yeah. So <clears throat> an interesting test has a company, it's called it, the name is also already mentioned, it was called se Semantic, yeah? So they did a, a test, uh, it, they called it Oper Operation Honey Stick. They lost, in a, a certain way, 50 smartphones in, a, in crowded places with uh, some monitoring uh, software on it, yeah? Just check what people are doing with smartphones if they are, fi if they are finding a smartphone. So <clears throat> they attempted yeah, the sensitive information, typically first, f what are the photos on it, social media, passwords, HR salaries, and all these stuff that was on, the f on these lost phones. Yeah? Painting also a, a, a clear picture what people typically trying to access. They, they are not only trying to get a, a, a contact list or a photo and then trying to, to um, return the phone, no. They are going through all these lists, yes, so. And while the good part of the story is half of these uh, founders have tried to uh, return their phones, almost all tried to access sensitive information. And that's where a better client level, uh, security level uh, uh, comes into uh, the, uh, the game. So that's why it is so important here yeah, that we need two-factor authentication for clients, yeah? or multi-factor authentication. Yeah, so. It is so important, yeah, because a password alone doesn't fit. Yeah, so. yeah. You need something you know, which is typically user ID, password, or whatsoever, yeah? and something you have, yeah? which is you have a, as an ownership. Yeah, so. and, uh, <clears throat> Let's go through a 2FA checklist. Yeah. First, I already mentioned it, user ID and password is great, but the, the problem of the user ID and password is that you can spoof it. You can spoof it even if you're sitting on the other side of the planet. If you have a Trojan horse or, or something like that on your phone, if you have a ma malware on the phone, uh, you can collect passwords, millions of passwords in just an hour. Yeah. If you have another factors, which is something you have, maybe you can grab one or two, but you can't uh, grab all. Yes, so another factor, something you have, is required uh, for secure authentication. Now, also take a quick look to a, a study which is telling us say, what, how these uh, devices are handled. Over 50 smartphone and tablet users do not protect their passwords. If I'm in a train, if I'm uh, <coughs> and I'm I'm looking how most of the people are handling with their smartphones. Very often, they, even if they're using an iPhone, they don't use the fingerprint reader. Yeah? They just ignore it. They haven't set it up. Yes, so It is built in, it is convenient, but they haven't set it up. Yes, sir. Yeah. And 90% uh, <coughs> saying that it's their own personal assets. Yeah? And, it's a, and most of them are uh, are also using it for accessing organizational or corporate yeah, in, uh, information. Yeah, so the combination is the danger. Yeah? Accessing for mobile is not bad. Yeah? And maybe you have no, having no password is not bad. But the combination of, a, of, of no password access, and accessing for mobile and then going into and then and storing confidential data, that's the bad thing of the story. The combination makes it worse. Yeah, so. And 60% of all these uh, users are wishing that there is a more convenient way of, of logging in authentication, not only to the phone itself, also to accessing 
um, for example, a corporate network, and so on. So, but continuing with our two, uh, 2FA checklist, yeah, the, you may have heard of two-factor authentication using a, a, um, an SMS or a text or a special app, yeah, where you say, okay, you're logging with your laptop into the system, and then you know, the app pops up and saying, oh, yeah, do you want to grant this, the access, yes or no, and all these stuff, yeah, so that's the beginning, that's not a bad idea, yeah. It's better than no two-factor authentication. But on the long run, these, this is software. Sof you can't protect software with software. This is a fundamental problem. It is a better than nothing approach, yeah? but it doesn't work out on the long run. New technologies yeah, will make these software security things uh, obsolete. Yeah? and we'll go around it, yeah? Even things like artificial intelligence and quantum computing will, will make that definitely obsolete. Last year, I was at the NSA and I had, uh, at, a, at, a at a conference, and there was also a discussion with, some, uh, with the director, and I asked him, what is your biggest fear? And he said, very clearly, quantum computing, because in a very few years, yeah, a quantum computer can break any encryption code, any, anything which is done by software. So if you, can, if you do not protect yourself and your valuable information with a hardware-based whatsoever security system, yeah, you will be um, uh, in a not a very good position. So basically, uh, <coughs> real long-lasting uh, security systems and concepts must rely on a piece of hardware, yeah? This is something uh, which is, might but need, uh, not be con convenient as doing nothing, having no passport or something like that, but it's something which really protects you, your organization, from data breaches which cost you mu way more than, uh, than a, uh, another a, a security thing, yes sir. Let's go to uh, what is the must-haves when, uh, when selecting a, a 2FA um, <coughs> uh, security solution. First, it must be bulletproof. This is what I was talking ab about uh, just before. Yeah? It must be device-proof in terms of device agnostic. Yeah? If Apple uh, announces a new iPhone yeah, and, uh, and you, you have to change everything, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, that doesn't um, make sense, and it must be also future-proof in terms of technologies. Let's take a closer look. Yeah? 2FA solutions must be bulletproof in terms of that they are using non-proprietary technology. They must use open technologies. If you have a great uh, company out there, and even if they have billions of dollars, yeah, so just one developer have to make one mistake to put the whole system um, <coughs> in a bad shape. Yes, sir. It is, has to be open technology. Only when a technology has been challenged already all over the world by thousands or millions of experts, yeah, then a technology can really regard it as, as safe. Yes, sir. And especially international organizations require um, international or global certified solutions. Yeah, so a very, very um, a common um, a, a level of se um, security is the, the common criteria um, uh, level of uh, uh, security. Common criteria is a global standard how to evaluate something if something is secure or not. Yeah, so. And that's why typically a very common technology, for example, are smart cards. Smart cards are globally certified, globally um, a, a secure, and, and globally acknowledged as a very secure piece of, of, um, of hardware. So, and also proprietary solutions, yeah, as I mentioned before, you, you may have heard of these RSA bug thing, yeah, so that the, the tokens have been compromised. So many organizations have been forced to exchange all their token infrastructure from RSA. Yeah? So, and this is something, this happens typically yeah, when you rely on only on a proprietary uh, solution. And always remember, you cannot protect software with just software. 
you have to take at least a piece of hardware to it. You have to store your private keys, your credentials, your access keys to a, into a piece of hardware so no software is ever able to access that. If you try to do it with software only, you can be sure that tomorrow on the other side of the planet there will be one guy who is a little bit smarter than you yeah, who will crack your piece of software. That's why you need hardware. So, second, device proof. Yeah? You, this, the solution must support different platforms. Yeah? And if, if it's an only, I love Apple, but it's a, if it's only supporting Apple, you will lose your customers or your organization which are and doing with other stuff. Yeah, so, and that's why it must support, it, it must travel uh, between these platforms. And it, ideally, yeah, you'd, you should have a, something like a, a, wireless, a, a wireless smart card which supports all these platforms at the same time you, so, the, so you, that you have one card where you can log into the, in the Windows, you can log into the Apple system, you can log into Android or in the Mac or whatsoever. Yeah, so. And you shouldn't rely just on the security of the um, device itself, yeah? Because if you are building a great um, security concept for your organization, and then uh, the device manufacturer is changing it, and as you know, a smartphone, or each year there's a new smartphone out there, and sometimes a feature is in there, sometimes a feature has been killed, yeah, because the smartphone manufacturer says, oh, that's not very interesting, we, I don't think we, need, we use it, or something like that, yeah? then you are in bad shape, and then you have to change all, everything. That's why it is so important to have something which is device agnostic, something which is independently from the device itself, yeah, and in the, independently from the fast innovation cycle of these mobile devices. Yeah, so. <clears throat> and Last but not least, it must be future-proof. Yeah, it shall, it shall not be de depend on these short um, uh, innovation cycles. I just mentioned that. The, if you uh, have an uh, Android phone, yeah, with a secure element in there, yeah, and a, or with an, with an SD card slot, and tomorrow, um, as Samsung did in a in, in the meanwhile. They changed their uh, design to have uh, that a few devices have a non SD card slot, others have it. And you, if your concept is built on an SD card slot, then you are also in a bad shape on that. So, <clears throat> I also mentioned already mentioned this um, a, a artificial intelligence and quantum computing thing. And don't think that this is in a far distant future. IBM is currently already selling quantum computers. They are not very powerful, but they are quantum computers. So, and it's the same as we had in, uh, with our computers and uh, with our desktops and laptops we had. Yeah? Each year they will develop, and in a, in a very few, in a very few, um, not so distant future, yeah, we have quantum computers which can break all these codes and all these um, uh, software uh, which is around. So you should act now on that. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Last but not least, um, I am very, very proud on um, having the opportunity uh, that, uh, to announce that uh, FileWave and CertGate are partnering up on a, a, on a better client security. So we have investigated the, the FileWave platform and also the CertGate platform what we have, and it's uh, instantly available, uh, the, um, the CertGate um, technology, which is consisting of, a, of wireless uh, smart card devices, which you can connect to Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Apple, Android, whatsoever devices, and which can carry your valuable data. And these can be managed and which can be uh, rolled out through the fi uh, FileWave system. So, so uh, this is something which is available right now, and, and I would be more than happy to, uh, uh, to talk to you if there are further questions on that. And uh, I will be around the full day. Unfortunately, I have to travel back 
to, uh, to Germany uh, tomorrow morning. So I would be, I'm looking forward to some discussions, your questions thereafter, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.